Thank you, Fatty. Our next speaker is Angela Langenkamp, um, who works with GTZ and he heads up the German bilateral program on the Millennium Development Goals and Poverty Reduction. She's got long experience of working on issues of social development, gender and children. Um, and also, I, I should highlight, spent 15 years in Kenya working very much on that agenda. So Angela, welcome. Thanks so much. So we'll just need to get to my presentation. I'd like to give you an insight into what GTZ does and how we complement work that's being done at the grassroots level, work we just learned and heard of from Fatih. Combining field experience, research, and policy advice to empower women. And uh, I'd like to give you a few examples of the work we have done. Of course, we can't, co can't cover it all, but here is an example of looking at Islamic law and customary law. So we start off with basically the, the analysis, and we worked on this topic over time, and then we looked at what does the legal provision have to do with the reality of day-to-day -day life of the women, and we took the next step and then looked into how can we influence that, how can we improve, how can we ensure that laws, statutory laws are implemented or, and, and women do receive their rights. So in one example here in, uh, Egypt, we supported local activists and the local organization to ensure that personal identity cards and documents were issued because they offered uh, and enforced the legal rights of women and uh, gave them access or provided them with rights in case of divorce or inheritance or passing on property to their children. Now, with the lesson learned how important, for example, documents are, legal, identity documents apart from, for example, land. We transferred this knowledge and looked into how to apply it in other contexts. And we did that, for example, in Indonesia after the tsunami, when women were largely left behind because they couldn't prove, they couldn't make their claims due to the lack of personal identity cards. And so here we supported the development of a law on population administration, addressing amongst others value and effects of personal identity documents, legal consequences of unmar unregistered marriages, unregistered children, and adoption cases or going further into um, inheritance. Unregistered children find it hard to claim their rights later on in case of hmm? school fees, for example, applying for scholarships. Hmm? So if the mother doesn't have identity cards, how do they pass on, how do they ensure that their children do have? Again, transfer and application of knowledge is a big part that combines research work like done here at ODI with practical work in the field. Yeah. Part of it, we commission ourselves, part of it, we draw from research work like this one here and take it into our uh, work on the ground. And to share it amongst ourselves, we conduct a gender competition yeah, to bring the experience from the field, from our colleagues, back to the headquarters, so then again we can share it out by our own networks. Again, we learned a lot about you need to know your rights, and often you don't do. A lot of us invest in research, and here we supported an initiative um, done by in, in collaboration with the World Bank and IFC, and it's a gender law library. They gathered information from uh, national legal provisions impacting women's economic status from 183 economies, countries. And it's online, and you will find, when you look, go in onto it, you will find entries on, for example, property rights for 300 entries or 85 entrant entries on inheritance. So the knowledge about where to start with the policy intervention is very important to then know what to focus on in your bilateral program or supporting local organizations on the ground. Utilizing, and, and what 
I associate with it is strongly that utilizing our, and this in this case it's not GTZ, but it's, it's a German uh, membership in multilateral organizations like the international finance organizations to promote women's <coughs> empowerment. Yeah, and we need to use this membership wisely. So here we supported it financially. We as well supported that or got together in the context of a global donor committee on enterprise development. Germany is a member in various, um, um, well, GTZ, as well as KFW, as well as the BMZ. On the British side, DFID is a member, for example. <coughs> it brings together donors working in the field of enterprise development, and they come up jointly to say what are the best approaches and strategies to promote, for example, in this case, a more do effective donor practices for uh, enterprise development. And when we looked at this was a conference, an annual meeting done and organized in 2007. When I looked at the program, I found there was no mention to gender issues or women's economic empowerment. So what we did with the consent of the donor committee organized a one-day preparatory conference and we looked at all the issues that were addressed in the main conference from a gender perspective and say, how do we get these concerns into the main document and the uh, handbook and guidance that's was meant to be developed out of the conference as a work stream of the donor committee. And you can see it, that's why I just copied the entire content. Land issues and property rights were among the issues being addressed in the conference. And we went down to say, generally, what's the provisions? What are the figures and facts? We learned that only one to 2% of the individual title liens are held by women. But then we went down to the national level and looked at actual practices, yeah. what does it mean? Yeah. And here, for example, we look at facts and figures from Kenya, and we see that access to land, only very few uh, women have access to land. Yet, a lot of them are agricultural workers. Yeah. So there's a big disbalance, a, a mismatch. This intervention we took in 2007 led to the establishment of a women's enterprise development network. Yeah. So today, it's not only part of the guidelines, but the donor community actually has established a work stream working on women's empowerment and taking all the concerns starting from individual pro documents to land and ownership rights into account and say, what does it have to do if we want to empower women? Where is the role of bilateral and multilateral donors to support? And finally, empowering women is an ongoing task. It requires gathering and sharing of knowledge and experience and translating the latter into concrete action. If you get stuck with the research, we haven't done the change. We haven't facilitated change, but we have contributed large towards it. So we need to take this knowledge and channel it into uh, the, the implementation, onto the implementation side. We do that, for example, looking at steps for action that it's a, it's a manual for our own colleagues in the field. We share our knowledge in a large network of uh, donors in the Train for Deaf network, where we organize joint learning events on the ground in, in the country, comprising of a third government officials from the country, a third donor representative, a, a third other stakeholders. This could be NGOs, this could be private sector. And here we lie very closely with ODI. ODI is developing the materials and uh, implementing the training on the ground. The last one here is uh, our work as we feed it in, as generate our and, and <coughs> compile our um, knowledge and experience into, for example, a good practice note in the context of OECD DAC mm -hmm. members there. Well, again, the floor is there to share experience and knowledge, make it known to others and draw on best practices as they are there. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much.